Hello students, welcome to our new video that is on new chapter that is on transmission, right? The transmission of the two wheeler engine and two wheeler vehicles. The power of the engine needs to be transmitted by the components of the transmission system of the two wheelers. In the previous video, we saw about the basics of the transmission that is required for the two wheeler vehicles such as the layout of the transmission system and also we see the components which are required for the transmitting the power of the engine to our wheel of the vehicle or the rear wheel of the two wheeler. So mainly in case of the transmission, the first component that is used for the transmission system is a clutch. We saw about the requirements of clutch, what are the aspects that has to be there in the clutch whenever we are using in the case of the two wheelers. So let's see about the different types of clutch which are generally used in the two wheeler vehicles. Right, the types of clutch will almost be similar to the clutches that we learned in the previous semester that in the subject of the basics of automotive system. But let's see that once again and let's revise the types of the clutch. The first one is the single plate clutch. In the figure you can see behind is that the input shaft and output shaft is connected with a clutch assembly. In the input shaft is an engine side and the output shaft is towards the transmission side. In the video you can see the plate which has been colored with a red color is our pressure plate. The plate which has the teeth around it is a flywheel and in between that there will be a clutch plate which will be in connection with a pressure plate. In the middle part you can see the diaphragm spring has been provided and with that spring our clutch lever has been provided which has been arranged with our clutch release or clutch operating mechanism. Whenever we operate our clutch with either a hand motion then the diaphragm spring will be pushed and the pressure plate will come outward side which has been connected with our clutch plate. Let's see the assembly in which you can see that the normal flywheel is being connected with our engine which runs on the engine power. With the flywheel we have attached one plate which is known as a clutch plate. In the clutch plate we have provided the splines which splines provides a proper fixing to the output shaft or we can say the transmission shaft which will be further connected with our gearbox. So clutch plate is now connected with a flywheel. So when the flywheel rotates, the clutch plate will also rotate and when with output shaft rotate. Now what will happen is that we will attach one pressure plate with our clutch plate. So when clutch plate and pressure plate both are in contact, so because of the friction, clutch plate and pressure plate both rotate at the speed of the engine. But because of the diaphragm spring which has been provided in the middle part, you can see whenever the spring is pushed, the pressure plate removes or goes outward side and the clearance is created between the clutch plate and pressure plate. So whenever we push the diaphragm spring, the pressure plate will be removed and the output will be zero. Only the clutch plate will rotate, the pressure plate will not rotate. So this is how simply the single plate clutch works and this type of clutch is widely used in the four wheelers. But as I have said in the earlier video as well, to lower the size or to get the smaller side of the clutch, in the case of the two wheelers, we use multi plate clutch in place of the single plate clutch because in that the number of clutch plates will be more. The diameter of the clutch plate will reduce because the number of clutch plate is more. So to get the same power as the single plate clutch, we will require lesser diameter of the clutch. So let's see the second type that is a multi plate clutch which is generally used in the engine or in the two wheeler vehicle. In that you can see the clutch plates are provided, the number of clutch plates are provided. There are uh, 4 to 5 number of clutch plates are provided or more than that 9 to 10 clutch plates are provided for the multi plate clutch. In that you can see the clutch plate is provided after that another clutch plate provided one is inner race and one is connected with our outer race. These are arranged alternately and the last one is a pressure plate. So 
this assembly is arranged with number of clutch plates only difference is that number of clutch plate is more the operation of this clutch will be 100% similar to the single plate clutch right you can see that with the diaphragm spring we have connected our number of clutch plates this is a diaphragm spring which is generally used in case of the single plate or multi plate clutch whenever we release our pedal the clutch will be engaged which means the diaphragm spring will push our clutch plates towards inward side so that all will be in contact and because of the friction that will be created in between the clutch and pressure plates the rotation will be transmitted further towards the gearbox so this is simply working of the single plate clutch as well only difference is that the number of clutch plates and pressure plates are more now what is the advantage of pressure on multi plate clutch is that the number of clutch plates is more so the power transmitting capacity will be more than the single plate clutch so in case of the two wheelers if we will use a smaller diameter of the clutch then it will be sufficient for our vehicle and lesser amount of the space will be used in case of the two wheeler because there is a problem of the space in the two wheelers and that problem will be resolved if we will use a multi plate clutch in place of the single plate clutch now the third type of clutch which is an almost a modern clutch which we generally use in the motorcycles as well in sports bikes or higher end motorcycles that is known as the assist and slipper clutch now assist and slipper clutch is a type of a multi plate clutch only two extra components is been attached one is known as the pressure cam and the second known as the clutch boss cam clutch boss cam is connected towards the clutch plate slide and pressure cam is connected towards the pressure plate side in the video you can see the slipper clutch is being used for the motorcycle the advantage is of the slipper clutch is that it is generally lighter in construction compared to other vehicles also there is two functions which is been given in the assistant slipper clutch one is the assist function second is the slipper function from that name the clutch is known so what are those function that we will see in a while also those two components that i have already told you right you can see these are the two components the left side component is the clutch cam and the right side component is the pressure cam which is connected towards our input and output shaft and over that our clutch plates and pressure plates are we use so how the assist function and the slipper function works and where it is required so whenever the motorcycle is going at a higher speed and the vehicle needs to take a turn right during the corner when we are going at a higher speed in the case of the two wheeler and if we want to take the turn then at that time there are chances that the vehicle can get slip or if the clutch is 100% engaged then there are chances that the vehicle can get slip so during the turning what happens in the case of the assistant slipper clutch is that the engagement between the two cams that i told you clutch cam and pressure cam will be lesser so the engagement teeth will be lesser and the amount of the speed that needs to be generated amount of the power that needs to be transmitted will be lesser in case of the slipper function let's see one basic figure that will show you how this actually works so these are the two cross sections of the clutch cam and the pressure cam given in the left figure you can see the assist function assist function which means whenever our vehicle goes on the straight direction or we or during whenever we are driving the vehicle normally at that time both the teeth of the clutch cam and pressure cam will be engaged at the 100% position but whenever we takes the turn what happens is that the pressure plate or the pressure cam which is been provided on the right side that will go slightly on the behind side so during that what will happen is that the contact between the two teeth will be lesser compared to the normal driving this only will happen whenever we are taking a turn so 
this is known as a sleeper function during that time the power transmitting capacity of the engine will be reduced but it is for the benefit of the driver and it is for the safety of the driver so that vehicle does not sleep away so this is how an assistance sleeper clutch works and this is generally used in the motorcycle now all those were the mechanical clutches which is used in a manual transmission what type of clutch is used in a automatic transmission so that is known as a centrifugal clutch according to its name it works on a centrifugal principle whenever the vehicle is moving or whenever the speed is more the centrifugal force is applied on the weight that is been connected in the engine and that weight will fly because of the centrifugal force in the figure you can see that whenever the engine is rotating up to a certain rpm there will not be a centrifugal force when the rpm increases the weight that is been connected with our output shaft will fly out when the weights fly out it will be in contact with our outer plate that is our driven member right you can see that the weights are connected with our driving member that weights will fly out when the speed increases and when the speed increases it will be in contact with the driven member which is our output shaft so when the weights are in contact with the driven member the rotation of the wheels will be started the centrifugal force will not be operated until the engine reaches a certain rpm in case of activas and jupiters it is generally around 500 to 600 rpm which is more than the idle rpm which means when the engine is running at an idle rpm the engine will be running below 500 rpm when we apply the accelerator rpm of the engine increases and at the same time the centrifugal clutch also gets engaged so we do not need to operate it manually centrifugal clutch works automatically and this provides us an automatic transmission which is an almost clutchless transmission we can say but the clutch is also present that is centrifugal clutch which operates automatically based on the speed of the engine so these were the four types of the centrifugal clutch that we use in the vehicle right in the figure again you can see that the centrifugal clutch is being shown in which the three weights are arranged that three weights will fly out when the speed increases right you can see in the right second figure on the right side that this, when the speed increases the weights that are connected flies out and that weight will be in contact with our driven member and so that the speed will be achieved so these were the four basic types of the clutch that are generally used in the two wheeler vehicles in the next lecture we will see about the next component that is gearbox or the transmission system until then thank you so much